is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. Why does that happen to me? And welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, it doesn't matter where you are at, as long as I'm here, and it's 2 o'clock. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we've got the S&Ps off uh, almost 40 points, Dow down 175, NASDAQ off 165. And there's something broken. I don't know what it is. Uh, we've had lots of uh, theories. Uh, somebody talking about the uh, Evergrande, which sounds like a never-ending cup of coffee from Starbucks. But I'm told it is a big real estate deal in China. Yeah, but uh, hey, what can you say? Uh, other people think it's uh, all about taxes. Some people think it's about uh, products uh, uh, shortages. Uh, some people think it's about unemployment. Some people think it's all of the above. Some people think it's, uh, they might even add a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of COVID on there. Um, but there is something wrong. Uh, I had a really good question here uh, right before the show from John in Philadelphia, although he's not always in Philadelphia. Um, and that is, uh, I came on earlier in the day and said uh, options had really flipped for what the prediction was. Um, and uh, he asked why that happened. We said had such a huge move. And the answer is today is quad witching. Although we had a small argument earlier in the day in the den uh, on why it is just uh, try witching and not quad witching, uh, because uh, but everybody still calls it quad witching. It's one of those things everybody knows about. Um, at uh, 9:35 Eastern time, for those people in Lutz, uh, options uh, on futures expire. And as soon as that happened, um, there was the floodgates of trying to get the two to match. Um, there had been apparently a, a ton of people extremely uh, bearish on the uh, futures and bullish on the options. Um, so even those kind of held up through yesterday. I had a play in AMD, uh, where we bought uh, calls yesterday, uh, and as one of the most uh, heavily shorted stocks, I was looking for it to bounce. It certainly did. Um, it just went the other way today. Um, but uh, it is uh, something that you really don't know how deep the well is uh, until it happens. Uh, it just goes to sh uh, this one is one of the ones where the difference has been at pretty astronomical. I'm trying to, I'll go back through the data over the weekend and see if we ever found one that was this wide. But for some reason, everybody on the futures is on one side and uh, most of the people on options were on the other. Uh, and when they pulled one away, uh, the other one uh, is kind of sucked in by a giant vacuum of what's going on. Anyway, uh, um, there was an equal I think this was around 11.30 or something, what, uh, before noon. Um, I ran the numbers, I think, at 11.30. And at that point, the, the uh, likelihood of closing out at uh, 44.50 on the S&P cash was the same as closing out at 4,400. Since uh, we were about exactly at this, well, not exactly this level, around this level. Uh, so there was like 12 or 13 points higher uh, and 35, 36 points lower. Uh, so on a coin flip, you didn't want to be long. Uh, we've tried a couple of times to rally. Nothing's happened. Uh, we're going to go through some charts that should have bounced either yesterday or today on the show today and see what they did or didn't do. 
Uh, like I said, I got the I got what I thought was confirmation in AMD, and it's bounced yesterday as the most heavily shorted stock. Um, it should have easily been able to squeeze people higher. Um, it did yesterday, and they came back firing away uh, at lower prices today. Uh, same thing with other ones out here. Um, I've seen a few stocks that look like they had blow-off tops or three drives to a top. Um, I'm just right now at the point where I'm all cash. I'm just not looking at a market that really other than today, which I wouldn't be surprised to see a giant flush in the last 30 minutes of the day. Um, we haven't had the volume up or volume down. Uh, we've gotten to places in the market where sh it should have cra cracked earlier today and there was no volume. It went up and still got rejected. It's come back down, still no volume. Um, a lot of times you would just say that is a market where um, you're, you're, you're just not trending, you're going sideways for expiration. But I think there's a giant trap door uh, available for 35 points before the end of the day in the S&P cash. So uh, got everybody out in the newsletter. Um, some with some small profits, uh, some with large profits, some with um, a couple of my homemade ETFs had some losers, one that was uh, almost a tie. So kind of a little all over the place. Uh, but uh, I continue to think that there's something else going on. And nothing really that I see in the headlines or the people have talked about in the den uh, have talked about it. Um, I also pretty much uh, uh, talk about options expiration, uh, but I brought it up in my seminars and sometimes on the show here. Opt uh, quad witching is one of the hardest ones to get options to make sense because you do have expiration on both sides. Um, generally, you get a kind of a clue after if you uh, sell off in the morning, then generally you rally in the afternoon. And if you rally in the morning, a lot of times you'll go soft in the afternoon. And that's why they, they kind of uh, consil uh, consolidate the two options and uh, futures on options and that stuff. Um, but uh, you know what? A lot of stuff like that is just kind of weird. I tend to shy away. The only reason I went with the AMD trade yesterday uh, or the day before, I forget now what it was, uh, was that there was a very good chance. Um, I still eked out a little bit, but uh, it wasn't the trade that I thought. Uh, options uh, did show that AMD could go to 110. That's at 104.25 now. So is every, uh, every trade going to be a winner? No. Uh, but what it's telling me is there's something going on that I do not understand. And uh, generally the old saying, when in doubt, get out. Or uh, as Jesse Livermore said, uh, no prognosis, no profit. You've got you to have kind of a good idea what's going on. What's wrong or what's right uh, with the patient. No prognosis, no profit. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. And we'll start talking about a lot of other stuff. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we return, uh, I want to say, I'm just going to call him M, asks, because uh, I'm wondering if this is some kind of trick name. <laughs> it, it might be. It may be a true name, so I'm not making fun of it. You never know. Maybe he'll send me the pronunciation of it, and I'll say it off the air several times to make sure it isn't. Uh, could the sale of gold be because China market losses presumably to pre uh, are preparing for such a loss? Uh, is the drop in Apple also a move uh, to cash for overseas markets and their losses? Is it time to invest in Apple or further confirmation of temporary bottom be considered? Um, all those things are possible. I don't see any kind of smoking gun, as I said uh, in my uh, opening monologue. Uh, that there is one theory that overweighs the rest of them, and you could say that's it. Maybe it's an all of the above, uh, but certainly uh, it the whole thing looks a little bit weird. Uh, as far as Apple goes, uh, let's go ahead and pull a chart up of that uh, real quick. Um, one of the problems I have uh, is that they didn't show up with anything. Uh, energy is a little bit more than uh, on this down slope than it was on the upslope. Uh, but they really, in fact, the, uh, a lot of the uh, tech channels on YouTube and Instagram and those kind of things were having a really tough time uh, trying to act excited about anything new. Um, you know, if you had an old phone, a handful of years, five years old, four years old, maybe it makes a lot of sense even – three years old, but there isn't a lot even evolutionary about the, the new phones. Uh, they didn't really talk too much about the rest of the stuff that made anybody change their mind. And of course, uh, I think I said that yesterday, that a lot of people have always thought of uh, Apple as a revolutionary company as it moves farther on 
Uh, it's more of an evolutionary company where they're just making everything 1% better. That was more of a company motto of Microsoft where we'll push something out and we'll just continue to make it better until it's okay. Um, generally, the idea was that they were going to have something neat, and whippy, and cool that no one else had. All the rumors were wrong. Um, they're never always right, but they've never been so wrong. Uh, I don't think any of the rumors were right, what it looked like, the uh, feature set, what they were going to talk about as being new. And, you know, you got a little bit more of a move back here. Volume's okay. Um, anything less than probably about 100 million shares is not a blowout, but you could back go back and retest 142. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different things and a lot of moving pieces. As I said, I went all to cash now. I don't care how much I loved uh, a, a particular stock. Um, when in doubt, get out. And sell when you can, not when you have to. So I was sitting on one that had done extremely well this week. Um, but as soon as I started seeing those options turn, my stomach just in a knot didn't tell me to short the, the, uh, daylights out of the market or anything, but did tell me that I should worry about it. Um, so I actually put on a few shorts, but nothing that I wanted to put in the newsletter because they could easily go against you or for you. If I'm sitting here, I'm five seconds away from making a decision. Um, and a newsletter, you're always 30 minutes away from uh, doing that. And you've got to have a much higher burden of proof uh, to go with your gut feeling. But uh, along with that gut feeling is that we're off 40 points on the S&P cash. Would it be a big deal to lose yet another 30 points before the end of the day? I do not think so. Um, and again, I don't know what it is or what people are focusing on. Is it a general malaise? Is it a hangover from... Afghanistan, uh, is it uh, a general, is it a, I mean, all the things in the headlines that you could pick from that get people down thinking that the market's headed lower. Uh, since it's all just a confidence game, and we know that, it's uh, whether everybody thinks the market's going higher or enough people do, or if it, uh, enough people think it's going lower. Uh, but uh, I'm going to say that um, it was, you know, we had two bounces. They quickly sold them. They quickly sold them. Um, you could make a case that we were beating out a bottom. You can also make a case that that bottom is going to break. I had one of my stocks actually break um, uh, below where it was going to. I'm pretty sure it was going to stop out today. It's about two bucks underneath uh, where it needs to be. So you might as well just, if you, you know, when you start getting a hint that one in a sector is doing bad, eh, probably time to move on. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep a, a close eye on it. But um, just be prepared. I think the last 30 minutes of the day uh, could be extremely telling. Uh, but uh, on a long-term basis, um, we go into the Fed on Wednesday. We've got Canadian elections on, on Monday. Um, the Canadian elections may have... Uh, uh, may actually move gold a little bit. Hard to tell, but that if anything's going to move uh, politically, it's going to move gold. Could be uh, Canadian elections with so many gold Canadian miners. Uh, other things going on, like I said, there's you can just pick from a laundry list that looks like a Chinese uh, uh, restaurants. You know, fifty different things that you can point at. But uh, maybe it's just everything. Combine. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, Every Grande. Doesn't that sound like a uh, Trudeau, uh, Trudeau is all? I don't think so. Uh, why it may be rigged, it may not be rigged enough. Um, even the uh, candidate was getting 3% three months ago was getting 15%. So... Remember, it's not him by himself. Uh, if he doesn't have control, uh, it's a parliament. If he doesn't have control of the parliament, he can still get the uh, big boot, the way I understand Canadian politics. So it's kind of like, uh, yeah, they have to make it interesting. But I, I'm not so surprised. I'm not so sure 
uh, that uh, that he's the kind of lock that a lot of people uh, said that uh, Newsom was. I think there are two different things going on. Uh, anyway, keep an eye on all that. Um, is, is money been raised? Well, certainly being sold. But you can make an argument that it was being sold because Apple didn't produce. Um, more interesting to me would be something on how Microsoft is doing MSFT, Mr. Softy. And that would be, you know, is it really doing that bad today? No. If they announce this giant, oh, if they announce the uh, giant buyback, yes. You know, that's more of a threat because most of the time, less than 10% of uh, fund uh, uh, share buybacks actually get executed. It's always a threat if someone wants to get heavily stored stock. We'll be back in a minute. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah. Oh, have a question here. Ah, uh, there. Are we? Ah. Are we got it? Okay. Um, question about Apple. Where do I see it expiring today? 
Well, options uh, that I ran during the uh, break show, they think is they're pretty good high possibility. It expires at 145 plus or minus 15 cents today. So that's kind of where I'm coming up where I wouldn't be surprised to see a 4,400. But that may be all the last few minutes of the day. It's not like a lot of this happens at uh, 145.89 now. Um, and that can change. You buy more. But for me, you're going into a work uh, a weekend. You got the Fed next week. You're already off 41 points on the S&P cash. You're off 175 on the NASDAQ. I, you know, in the olden days, I'm going to say, which is like 2002 to 2007, it wasn't beyond the scope to see expiration day have massive swings of the, you know, one and a half, two percent range just because there were so many people off sides. Um, computer programs better now, risk control programs better. So it doesn't tend to take those big wild swings. But as I said earlier in the show, there was such a wide disparity between options on futures and uh, actual options uh, that the market's kind of uh, unstable, which means that uh, it could kind of die out or it could turn into a raging inferno uh, before the end of the day. Um, I'll just uh, keep some short positions uh, on that I'm going to cover before the end of the day uh, and see. But I think that there's a good possibility uh, that we could see some rips in some of the bigger tech names by the end of the day, probably caused by Apple. If that does get down to 145, it's 91 cents in the scheme of things, not a big deal. Uh, but such a huge uh, uh, part of the indexes uh, that it'll make everything uh, kind of go back into a, a spiral of shaming. Um, a shaming, what would you call it? Spiral of selling. A shame spiral, I think is what they call it now. Uh, but uh, certainly that's it. Anyway, one of the reasons I've kind of kind of flip in here uh, is not because I didn't have some positions that were in the money. I did. Uh, and they're pretty much where I sold them a couple hours ago. Uh, but it is uh, a lot of these stocks that should have bounced. Um, I'm going to go through a bunch of these now. Maybe they do it on Monday. Maybe there's something going on. But we had uh, Aurora uh, Cannabis, ACB, probably not highly dependent on the uh, economy. Um, in with a little less, or a little, eh, around 100, uh, what, one and a half billion shares lighter handful of days, never really has done anything. Uh, AFL, CIO, which is Aflac, um, had kind of a, a fairly decent uh, three days of going sideways, lower today. Again, none of these really have a lot of volume, but should have been around here. We got first majestic uh, silver. Uh, which actually had a little bit more uh, energy on the last leg down off that 1366 high. Um, you know, you had an 8 million share a day yesterday. You had a 6 point, and let's call it 6 and a quarter uh, million share a day. It's lighter, but you really didn't get much in the way of a bounce. You got a market acting like it's not doing well. Uh, AMCR. Uh, some of these were at fairly decent support levels. Uh, their support levels at about $12.20. Um, this one kind of jumped the creek, which is the reason I'm out of my long positions. I was afraid that we wake up Monday and it gets even worse if we don't have that. I'd rather wait uh, and pay up on Monday than wake uh, wake up to another 40 points down in the S&P cash. Uh, Amaris, uh, been going sideways. For a handful of days, not a real good example, but interesting. Uh, Altus uh, had been sitting out here at low, had a nice uh, retest, probably should have bounced today. AVTR, uh, Avantor is one of the stocks up here that just keeps going up. Still no sign on that one that it should have flipped. Uh, ben Franklin Resources, uh, this one's just a big triangle waiting to bust out generally in the wrong direction. Um, with a head fake and then go the other way. Uh, BHP, uh, this is one that I thought probably should at least go sideways today. Uh, another gap down. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, this thing's been gapping down for, what, three weeks? Probably not a good sign. CDEV, which is Silver Run Acquisition. Um, again, uh, you're at the, kind of these highs. Interesting stock, not much volume today. CGC, um, just sideways. No volume last really the last three days, but no bounce either. Uh, off 44 points on the S&P cash. Clovis Oncology, CLVS. Uh, nice bounce, three days of declining volume, though, and not making any new highs. Uh, CNX, Console Energy, did have its doji. That was the high. You've pulled back a little bit. Got about half the volume today. Uh, CP, uh, testing. Now, this is the stuff... Uh, that dreams are made out of, except when the market doesn't go your way. If the market start heading up, this is a very interesting low. I would have liked a nickel lower by the closeout here, Canadian Pacific uh, Railway. And again, maybe this is something to do with the elections. Not so sure about the company, but uh, the Canadian elections on Monday. But you got a 22 million share low at 67.42. You got to 67.47, so you're a nickel higher right now on one fourth the volume. I do like that, but again, you know, generally even on a day like this, you're going to get a little bit of a bounce if it's the volume's that light, and we're not getting any of it. Off 46 points now on the S&P cash. Feel like an auction ear uh, going into the sale. Deutsche Bank uh, did retest a seven million share high. This is uh, thir uh, what, uh, July 29th, high at uh, 13.08. You got to 13.24, rolled back over on it on 2.44 million shares so far. Uh, that may be interesting. I don't like to short low-dollar stocks, but that may tell you something about the uh, uh, outstanding uh, problems that maybe uh, European banks, I don't know if they're involved in that Evergrande Huge, uh, never-ending cup of Starbucks coffee, but uh, not sure. A little bit of a reversal out here, maybe dark cloud cover on the last handful of days with Dropbox, although it should be doing well. It's going into a, a six and a quarter million share low at $30 and two cents. Uh, that had, yeah, six and a quarter million shares. It came into that with just two million shares a couple of days ago. That's why I was thinking maybe you should get a bounce here, right? Uh, if you're supposed to be getting a bounce and you, you don't, it reminds me of the dog that didn't bark. We'll talk about that when we return. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And uh, Dan in the den says uh, that they're going to start voting on whether or not we're going to get booster shots or not. So maybe before uh, the close here today, we may have some action in those uh, uh, in those vaccine biotechs. So uh, that may be uh, an interesting play. We'll see if uh, they come out with the news before the close today. Uh, other things going on, as I said, kind of you know, we were down 45. We're down 40 now. Um, I suspect if we follow patterns of other markets where you go into the close and you really don't get a significant rally, it's that last 30, 45 minutes that's uh, pretty big. So uh, Tom will guide you through that uh, and the close today. Um, a lot of times you just kind of hurry up and wait like the military, uh, waiting for these things to come. But um, I, I don't think it's going to be a flat close. I don't think we're going to wake up and find out we're at 44.33 uh, at 4 o'clock today. I think there's, there's enough imbalances that either they're going to run these stocks higher or lower. But my guess is lower. Um, very tough to get people to start buying right into a horrible weekend. Sometimes they'll buy right at the close, but... Generally, that's about it. They hope that they're going to get a better price if they just hang on. Uh, we were talking about the dog that didn't buy, uh, bark. That's the uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, thing where he, he identified that the uh, dog must have known the killer because he barked at anybody he didn't know. And uh, since uh, uh, the killer killed his master and didn't bark, it was somebody he knew. Um, so sometimes doing nothing is a something. Uh, but, uh, again, like I said, not really a good sign out here to see a 6 million share low tested with 2 million shares and come right back to it the next day. It is a market of stocks, not a stock market. We should be seeing something on some of these. And for the most part, they're not doing much. Um, we'll go through the rest of them here on my list of things to look at. Uh, to, to, to. Uh, Dynavax Technologies, you gap down, coming up a little bit, no volume there. Uh, EDP, uh, I'm not going to say there's a lot there. Um, Genius Brands, uh, that one actually tested its low on higher volume. Uh, this is the one I wanted to get to. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, not one you think about a lot. Uh, $15.89 uh, has come back down to test the previous low at $13.48. Uh, That's the July 19th low that had 13 million shares. Um, you're into it with 8 million shares now. So you're going to be fairly light, may not close back above it, 
but generally you get at least some level of support um, with the light volume. You haven't seen it quite yet. Uh, two, 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 okay. Uh, IBM, this is kind of an interesting one. It's back to kind of long-term support. It gapped up on earnings back on April 20th uh, on 15.5 million shares. Uh, back into it today with 2.33 million shares. So I would uh, just assume this thing would have popped a buck or two uh, by now. Um, other people are looking at the same kind of stuff I'm looking at. Uh, but the question is whether or not we're just going to have a prolonged sell-off. And at that point, you may have light volume, but you may be able to see it at 132. And, of course, if you loved it at 135, you're really going to love it at 132. Anyway, uh, double gap down there at 132. Uh, but um, no volume today on it, but no jump either. Still hovering around 40 points lower on the S&P cash. Um Again, Juniper Networks actually probably should be doing a little better. I don't see that there's a lot technically in that. Uh, Kroger, we talked about this one for a long time. Um, one of the few grocery stores that we've ever seen do this. Um, we've been kind of waiting for that double repo pattern to set up, and it did. I'm not a big fan of shorting grocery store companies, but um, we've been talking about that double repo pattern for a while. If you want to really go through that, uh, this is kind of a good example. You want 10, 15 days above a three by three or a nine day moving average. You get a couple of days below it as you did back here on uh, uh, sep, uh, what is that? August 25th, 27th through the 30th. You go up above it for a handful of days, and then generally the idea is to pull the trigger short as soon as it closes underneath that, because that's generally when you have these big down days as we're looking at at Kroger. I've been thinking that we'd rally into next week and have a pattern similar to this, but it's getting a little bit more muddy. Um, the water's not getting any clearer, but maybe by next week it does. Uh, okay, microvision, no big deal on that one. Let's take a look at uh, that. Nice source, NI. Uh, previous low at 3.7 million shares, uh, 2.14 million shares now. So certainly going to come in lighter. It has gone below it. You got a little doji out there. So maybe that's one to look at Monday. If uh, everybody turns that... Uh, Frown upside down, and we're all smiling come Monday. Uh, Nielsen, uh, this thing's just been going lower, but fairly a good test of uh, the uh, 4.8 million share low at $19.18. I just don't know if these companies can ever exist long term anymore, especially when you look at the uh, ratings for uh, terrestrial style TV. Um, I just don't know if there's a whole reason to have them anymore. Um, I'm sure the people that work at Nielsen would say so. Um, today, you got about uh, 2.1 million shares going into that 4.8 million shares. Maybe there's something I'm unaware of in that industry. But uh, as, uh, asking what people are watching on TV, probably, can't you just get all that from Roku today? Can't you just get all of that from Netflix can't you get that all from an ISP, an internet service provider uh, like Comcast or something like that that just watches the traffic and knows uh, who you're connected to? I think you can. Uh, Curate uh, Retail Group, and eh, don't see anything in that. Uh, Siri um, had a nice test on lighter volume. Didn't get much of a bounce, though, either. Uh, these are ones where you start saying, okay, you had 23 million shares on August 13th. Uh, you went below it by a penny, closed back in it uh, with 17 million shares. Yeah, can you get another test on lighter volume? But should have gotten a little bit more of a bounce in that one. Uh, now, here's something that we've talked about for a while, uh, and that is maybe a setup for a top in uranium. Uh, you had a nice uh, reversal here in UEC today. Uh, volume is not not good, 
but uh, probably more than you would like. It is breaking through the ninth day. We'll look at CCJ uh, with the return. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we wrap up the week, uh, not a pretty sight right now down... Uh, 161 on the NASDAQ, 167 on the Dow, down almost 40 on the S&P, but we didn't break right then. Again, generally on these uh, quad witching days where you're down into a Friday, um, there's a lot of action before the end. You, uh, you don't want to be, you want to expect the unexpected. Anyway, uh, we're looking at uh, Cameco, CCJ. We've got a nice uh, break lower. Uh, this is uh, more of a classic Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern setting up, but not confirmed. You'd want that to go back above the three by three or nine day moving average for a couple of days, as we talked about, and then go back below. And that's generally where the big retraces will happen. Uh, unclear as to how much front loading there was uh, and stuffing the channel uh, for all those new Chinese uh, reactors. Uh, but uh, we shall see. There's no reason to believe that the end of the world has happened yet. 
what you want is a light volume bounce back over that uh, trend line and then a close back below it. Um, this could be just a lot of market gas, but generally anything that goes up like this uh, will get at least another try at a high. And if that high fails, that's generally where everybody goes, huh, I don't want any more of this. And they all decide to sell at once. Doesn't mean that it's gone for years or anything like that. It could just be, you know, a couple of weeks where you get back to maybe 19 and a half or maybe 18 bucks or something. Um, I mean, you were off 26.57 already, but let's say you get back up to like 25 and then it pulls back down. You know, seven bucks on that, pretty, uh, pretty big move. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll be back here Monday. Same bat channel, same bat channel. Have a great weekend, all. Have a smile. <laughs>